want to walk you to the uh, 11.30 Wednesday Bible study uh, from Doctrinal Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. I want to welcome you to a new study. We're going to do a study on spiritual gifts over the next few weeks. Uh, taken from uh, 1 Corinthians 12, chapters 12, 13, and 14. And today we're going to look at the chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. As Paul introduces the subject, he does it kind of in an interesting way uh, with the word unaware in the, in the New American Standard or ignorant in verse 1 in the King James. And it's where we get the word out of the Greek language, we get the word agnostic. And my title of today's message is Agnostic Believers. And, and, I, and that will be explained today in our lesson. Here's how it reads, and then we'll have a word of prayer. Now concerning spiritual gifts, notice you want to notice that the word gifts is in italics, meaning it's, it's insinuated but not given uh, by a Greek word. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware is the word ignorant or where you get the word agnostic. You know that when you were pagans, He's talking to the Corinthians who were pagans. You were led astray to dumb idols. In other words, they couldn't speak. However you were led, you were led however you were led to them. Therefore, I make known to you, they're probably cultural, therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, which apparently is some of the idols were accused of, and no one can say Jesus is Lord, which apparently they were being accused of, except by the Holy Spirit. In other words, there is the spirit of the demonic world that's in, that's in conflict with the spirit of God. And, and we're going to cover uh, verse, we're actually going to cover verse 1 uh, in today's lesson in the idea of an agnostic and an uh, agnostic believer, okay? I was one, and I'll explain that, and I'll explain the word. Uh, hopefully, you'll understand what that word really means in the language that's being used here, not necessarily the way it's used in the world. Let's have a word of prayer. Remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin in the Christian life. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. That would just be three categories. Um, how do I get out of carnality and back to the spirituality of the indwelling ministry, the Holy Spirit who lives in the life of a believer, church age under new covenant? Believer? I have to confess my sin. 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You see, confession takes me back to the cross of Jesus Christ as a Christian, as a believer, not for salvation, I've already had that, but rather for sanctification, the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit in my life. When I confess my sin, I'm restored through the cleansing of the work of Christ on the cross to the Christian life, not for salvation, for sanctification. It's very important you know that. And so I give you a moment to confess personal sins to the Father. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you, which restores you. And that's important for Bible study because in John 14, 15, and 16, when Jesus is instructing that he's got to go and the Holy Spirit will come, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will have an enormous ministry. One of them is to teach and recall the word of God from your soul. So here we go. 
you take a moment, and I'll, I'll close this moment of time of prayer with us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these who have come by the automobile or, or by the Internet especially uh, to visit with us at this luncheon hour to study with us a new series called Spiritual Gifts. It's the dynamics of the Christian church. It is a subject that's, if known, misunderstood, and we'll try to clear up a lot of problems which Paul addressed in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. He was answering a request on some problems with spiritual gifts. They, were had, they understood they had spiritual gifts, but they're having trouble with the exercise of them and the function. I pray today we would become aware of just the fact that there are gifts, and then we'll, over the course of time, address some of the problems that Paul was addressing in chapters 12, 13, and 14. I pray the Holy Spirit might minister the truth of the Word of God to our souls, and our souls uh, would be able to share the truth with other people about spiritual gifts because a lot of people are agnostic about spiritual gifts. So enlighten us today, Father, with knowledge from the Word of God as truth. We will know the truth. The truth will set us free. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I mentioned my introduction. Let me tell you what this word uh, unaware in the Greek language, uh, Paul opens up in verse 1. He says, now concerning. That's uh, day, the conjunction day with peri, uh, genitive of reference. And what is important is Paul uses that to separate a discussion on problems the church has written about. For example, in chapter 7, verse 1, he uses this phrase now concerning about the things that you wrote about. He's going to do it again in chapter 8, verse 1. He's going to do it again in chapter 12, verse 1. And he's going to do it again in chapter 16, verse 1. And it's all about where it began in the 7th chapter, verse 1, now concerning the things about which you wrote. They were having problems within the, Cor the Corinthian church, and he's addressing different sections of 1 Corinthians on these problems. Seventh chapter on a problem, 8, 9, 10, 11, then 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16, he closes out his book. So it's important that you understand that we're in different sections of dealing with problems. This time, we're in chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15. I'm going to deal, chapters 12, 13, and 14, dealing with problems with spiritual gifts, not that they didn't know they had them, not that they didn't, weren't interested in, in exercising them, but in doing the function of them, they were having some problems. And so we're dealing with it. Now concerning spiritual if you have your study guide, if you don't, you know you bring a Bible, a pencil, and a piece of paper so you can take notes. This is Bible class. And so we expect you to take notes on some important issues. For example, the word gifts is in italics because it's not in the original language. You have to read the context. In other words, if you read chapters 12, 13, and 14, you'll know that he's talking about spiritual gifts. He talks about because that's what he talks about. This is the section on which he's talking about that. But he does use the word spirit. Notice spiritual. Now concerning spiritual. And that's the word pneuma, which is a word for spirit, uh, tikas, pneumatikas. And he's talking about the gifts of the spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts because we're in the new covenant under the church age. Didn't do that in the Old Testament. It's unique to the New Testament under the new covenant. And so he uses the word pneumatikos to, to, to describe gifts that are given by the Holy Spirit. For example, 
the, under the new covenant, church age, the moment a person believes that Jesus died for his sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day, he gets saved by grace through faith and not of himself as a gift of God. The moment he believes the gospel, the Holy Spirit, because we're in a new covenant church age, does eight works in that package of salvation that he can never lose in time and eternity. One of those eight is to distribute a spiritual gift to every believer. You will learn that in chapters 12, 13, and 14. Well, you, you know, you got to read your Bible. You got to read your Bible. You should be reading chapters 12, 13, 14 as I go through this. So he said, I'm in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, talking about church age believers under the new covenant, I do not want you to be unaware. Notice, I'm going to spell the word for you. It's where you get the word in the English agnostic. It, in, this is a verb form. A-G-N-O-E-O, -E agnoeo. And so it's where you get a, uh, this whole idea and concept. Now, in the noun form, A-G-N-O-S-E-I-A, -E -E okay? Agnostic. It, but here's what you have to understand, that what this word means in the Greek language. The A on the front of that word is really important because it, it, it's translated without. That's why they translate the English unaware. That really does, it's not a good definition. And I suppose ignorant, even though it does mean that, is probably not a good translation. But the A on the front of that word means without. And then the G-N-O-E-O on the verbal form of that word means without knowledge. An agnostic is a person who is without knowledge on a specific subject. He doesn't know enough about it to be able to reason about it with anyone. And that is the word that is used here. It means to be ignorant or without knowledge of a specific subject that only categorical Bible doctrine properly taught can give you knowledge of it. If you, you don't have knowledge of some doctrine, some specific subject, how, how do you change that? Well, you study it. You, 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 you study it categorically. You look at a specific, like, like spiritual gifts. That's a subject. They were, they were unaware of, there was a, a time in their life before they were saved and right after they were saved, they, they were unaware that there was such a thing as spiritually gifted ministries in the church. And so Paul is going to explain. And they were having troubles with that. They were having, real, they were having some real troubles with trying to come into how does that all work in the church. And so Paul is going to explain it over, th it's going to take three chapters to explain the how to correct their problems. And those three chapters are categorical doctrine on spiritual gifts. It's, spiritual gifts are talked about in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, and Ephesians 4, even where they're listed. Spiritual gifts are listed. <clears throat> so it's really important you understand that. Now, understanding this definition without knowledge of a specific subject, I was an agnostic believer. When I came to Christianity, I had really no background of, Bib of the B Bible or, or the, the dynamics of a church, how it functioned, wasn't part of one, didn't intend to be part of one, was not in or didn't have a Bible, wasn't interested in getting one. So when I came to Christianity, I mean, I had a clean slate as far as information. I, I didn't have anything. I mean, I thought Jesus Christ was a swear word. I never thought of it as actually being a person that actually lived. 
people say to me, what did you do about Christmas? We just exchanged gifts. And, you know, when I was little, it was Santa Claus. And when I was older, it was just gifts. And it was a day of the year, like Fourth of July or anything else, Thanksgiving, Halloween. So when I came to Christianity, I, I, I didn't know anything about anything. I was an agnostic believer about everything. The only thing I, 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 I really knew is that I had believed the gospel and had been saved. I spent three years, my first three years as a Christian, I spent in a, a very good evangelical church. They never, in the three years I was there, they never, they never taught at all on spiritual gifts. I was oblivious to, the, to any spiritual gifts ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then I went into ministry. I spent four years, after the three years, I spent four years in theological training and never covered the subject of spiritual gifts ministries in the church. I'm seven years deep into Christianity, and I'm an agnostic believer on the subject of spiritual gifts. It wasn't until in my own personal study life, I began to study the book of 1 Corinthians, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, through the book. When I got to the 12th, 13th, and 14th chapters, I went kaboom. My, 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 they're spiritual gifts. Every believer under the New Covenant Church Age, which I did understand, is given at the point of salvation a spiritual gift that is his dynamic ministry in the church of Jesus Christ. I learned all that just in the 12th chapter. That was an enormous enlightening of revelation to me. And as a result of studying the book, and especially this on the subject of spiritual gifts, I was no longer ignorant on this subject. I was no longer agnostic. I had now knowledge. I had knowledge. As a result, as I began to travel and do ministry among other churches, especially when I was with the Billy Graham Evangelism Organization, I found out there was a vast ignorance in the churches about spiritual gifts. When I left the Graham organization and came back to the church because I felt a need to teach the church the Word of God under the banner of the New Covenant Church Age doctrines, I teach on spiritual gifts every year to my church. I have taught it for, this is my 47th year to teach on spiritual gifts. Now, you may be one of those ag agnostic believers in regard to spiritual gifts. You go like, I've never heard of them. Or you go like, I I've heard of them, but I don't know anything about them. And there seems to be a lot of confusion about it. So I just stay away from them. Don't do that, my dear friend. Whatever you do, don't do that. So I'm going to give you a study. We call it the 2021 study of spiritual gifts because I do it every year. I mean, you go to our website. <laughs> now, you're going to find growth in my life on the subject matter because I teach it every year. I grow every year in this subject, but I teach it every year. I teach it every year because I feel it's so important to the church. And I'm going to tell you uh, four reasons why I think this is important today, why it's very important. Point number one. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 to answer specific questions regarding spiritual gifts and their function in the body of Christ, the church. 
he, inter, he, he begins this in ch chapter 7, verse 1, then 8, 1. Then he finally gets to the subject of spiritual gifts, you know, the things about what you wrote about when we get to chapter 12, 13, and 14. It's important that you know that. There's a phrase in there now concerning the things about what you wrote. Chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 12, chapter 16. Okay? Now, we're on the subject, and he opens the subject by saying, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be unaware of the dynamics of the importance of spiritual gifts. And so he sets down and he teaches heavy on the subject involving the gifts. In chapter 12, he's just going to lay out the subject. Then he gets to talking about the problems in 13 and 14. Paul responded doctrinally like a good pastor does. Paul responded doctrinally to their questions so that they, they might not be ignorant or without sufficient doctrinal knowledge regarding spiritual gifts and the gifted ministry within the body of Christ the church. And so he writes on it. He introduces it just like he does, chapter 7, verse 1, 8, 1, 12, 1, 16, 1. This is what he's doing. He is trying to correct congregational problems regarding the function, the understanding, and then the function of spiritual gifts within the church, the body of Christ. And so our series of lessons over the next few year, weeks is going to address some of the problems. But I'm going to study the 12th chapter so that you can get a good look at spiritual gifts. Now the second point. You will note that the word gifts is in italics in 1 Corinthians 12.1. You have to go to the context, chapter 12, 13, and 14, to understand that he's talking about spiritually gifted ministries that the Holy Spirit gives every church age believer. All right? Look. <laughs> Dear heart, you got to study. If you don't want to be ignorant about spiritual gifts, you got to study chapters 12, 13, and 14. If, if, it, if you don't care and you want to remain ignorant on this specific subject, which is dy dynamically important to your life, then you need to become a student for the next few weeks with me. Spiritual gifts will be the subject in chapters 12, 13, and 14. In the 12th chapter, verse 3, Paul says, Now there, uh, in, cha in chapter 12, verse 4, not 3, in verse 4, he says, There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of gifts. The word gift is really important. Now, he's talking about, in verse 1, he used the word pneumatikas, spiritual. In verse 4, he says gifts. This is the word C-H-A-R-I-S, where you get grace with an M-A on the end of it, where you get charisma or charismatic. And it means the results of God's grace. <laughs> Watch this in verse 4. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. All spiritual gifts are the results of God's great salvation because you get it the moment you believe Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead. It's one of the eight works of the Holy Spirit under the New Covenant Church Age. Every believer, every person who believes the gospel, one of the eight works, one of the eight works is to give you a spiritual gift. And it is your nomenclature in the church. Your, the nomenclature of your ministry in the body of Christ. You're going to see it in verse 12. If you read 1 Corinthians 12 through 27, you're going to see it. He's going to compare your gift to a part of your body, an eye, an ear, a nose. It makes up. Parts make up the whole body. Well, you got to read the Bible, people. 
the context that Paul is talking about in chapters 12, 13, 14 are spiritual gifts. They're called spiritual pneumatikos. They belong to the Holy Spirit. The I-K-O-S on the end of that, that suffix on the end of the word spirit means belonging to the Holy Spirit. You will see, you will see in verse 7 and 11 how he distributes them for the common good of the church. Very important. There, there are a variety of spiritual gifts. They are the results of God's grace at the point of salvation, the Holy Spirit distributes a gift to every church age believer. And, and, and there are a variety of gifts. And, and they're listed in chapters 12. You can read ahead and, and find them. You're going to see them listed. There are a variety of charisma of gifts which is the results of God's grace, the, a, the M-A on the end of that word, but the same Spirit. The same Holy Spirit is going to give one believer a gift, give another one a different gift, 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 to form the body of Christ, the church, in the world. It is the visible manifestation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church of Jesus Christ. If you read chapter 12, you're going to see it. I'm not making this up. All spiritual gifts are the results of God's grace in salvation. Romans, the 12th chapter, where Paul talks about it in verse 3 and verse 6. He says, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, Now, the great, it's always grace, their charisma, their charismatic gifts. They're given to you by the Holy Spirit and distributed to you, given to you at the point of salvation. But they're for the manifestation of the body of Christ on earth because he's in heaven. The body of Christ is on, the, the resurrection body of Christ is in heaven, but yet his body's on earth through the church and identified by spiritual gifts, arms, legs, ears, nose. Chapter 12, verses 12 through 27, you got to read it. It is important that you understand that spiritual gifts are not natural or human propensities. They're supernatural. They belong to the Holy Spirit. They're given by God's amazing grace at salvation. And they function under the grace system of God. Pretty, pretty, pretty. For example, a person goes to college to become a teacher of a specific subject, math, English, Science. This does not mean that they have a spiritual gift of teacher in the church. The gift of teacher is supernaturally and 100% given by grace. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's given by grace. It functions by grace. It's given by the Holy Spirit. It functions by the Holy Spirit. It's not part of the natural. It's not part of the part of the natural nature or the flesh of man. My 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 people, you got to get this now. You got to get this. You say oh, I've never heard of such thing. Well, look, it's in First Corinthians twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. You will by the time you you get through with this. If you want to take a look at some of the spiritual gifts, you could go down to verses 28, and he, and he, and he talks from, 30, from 28 through about 30 on spiritual gifts. And the, the point he's making in that is not everybody has the same gift. 
Not everybody has the same gift. Be sure you read that. Not everybody. He gives a different gift to everybody because he's forming a body that has different parts so that the body, when the, the parts make up the body, so the body becomes manifested of the Lord Jesus Christ. The body of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. Write this down. Ephesians 5, 23, 24, 25. Jesus Christ is the head of the body and the Savior of the body. He is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. We are parts. We are members. And whatever member you are in the body is your spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. Another problem that people have, spiritual gifted ministries are not the same thing as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We all have different spiritual gifts, but we all have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit produces fruit. You know the nine fruit of Galatians 5, 16, walk, and here's the fruit, 22, 23. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Did you write this down? How are you going to, you going to remember it? How are you going to read it? How are you going to look at it? You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You won't be agnostic. You will be knowledgeable. Come on, people. You got to study. Even though we all have different gifts, they all operate under the principle of grace, under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They're supernatural. They're given supernatural. They operate supernatural. They don't operate by the flesh. In the book of, in the book of Acts, uh, different people tried to figure out. They would, see, they would see them work, and they would go like, I'm, gonna, I'm going to try to mimic that. They couldn't do it. Simeon tried it. Couldn't do it. They're supernatural. You can't do it either. Just because you went to college and have a teaching degree doesn't mean that you have the gift to teach her. It's supernatural. It operates by grace and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, or it does not operate as a gift, a spiritual gift. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7, but to each one, but to each one, who is the each one? Every person that believes that Jesus died for their sin was buried and raised on the dead third day. That's the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. The gospel is the power of God to save everyone who believes, Romans 1, 16. Therefore, you're saved by grace through faith, not yourself as a gift. And with that gift comes, this, comes the spiritual gift. One of the eight works of the Holy Spirit is to give you a spiritual gifted ministry that operates in the body of Christ, the church. He's talking to a local church at Corinth called the Corinthian Church. I mean, what church do you belong to? What do you mean you don't belong to a church? Oh, you say you go to an internet church. Listen, what church do you put your body in so that your gift can supernaturally function to those people in your geographic? It's the church of Corinth. It's the church at Rome. It's the church at Ephesus. It's the church in Birmingham. My, my, my. Where is your body? Your body is not out in outer space or in some cloud. That's called the rapture. Where your body is is where your church is and your ministry to that church should be. My, my, my. What is wrong with you? 
my, my, my. Quit all that foolishness. Well, I can't find a church I like. Well, become one. What do you mean? Listen, you're a member of the body of Christ. You're not the whole body. You're just a member of it. Do your part. Be a good arm if that's who you are as a spiritual idea. You can't have an arm floating around out in outer space and think that somehow you're part of a... Listen, if for people see it, they just see an arm. They don't see a body. Your gift has to be functional with a body of believers. Mm. Each one, verse 7, but to each one is given the manifestation, definite article, of the Spirit for the common good. You know what the common good? So that the body of Christ is formed in a geographical place that it becomes visible, the ministry is visible one to another and to those who would visit. And it's for the common good of the body of Christ, the church, the local church. Well, boy, I got my work cut out, had I? <laughs> oh, my goodness. To each one is given a present passive indicative is given, is given, is given, and it remains. Whatever gift you have, you have until Jesus returns. The passive voice is the voice of grace. It is the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. It is the Holy Spirit distributing under the principle of grace gift. Grace gift. For by grace are you saved. Not of yourself. It is a gift. Part of that gift is, a, is the Holy Spirit giving you a spiritual gift. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. He's talking about a spiritual gift. Point number three. Each church age believer receives a spiritual gift the moment he believes that Jesus died for his sins, was buried, and raised from the dead the third day. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11. Listen to verse 11. That 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But one and the same Holy Spirit works all these things, gifts, distributing to each one individually just as God wills or just as the Lord wills. You don't choose what gift you want. It is will to you. It is God understanding the bigger picture of the church in the world. And he places individuals in certain churches with certain gifts by his will. That's why how I wound up in Birmingham at Doctoral Studies Bible Church with the gift of teacher, pastor, teacher. Here's my closing point for today's lesson. It should be mentioned. Now watch this. All three members of the Godhead are involved in spiritual gifted ministries in the body of Christ, the local church. All three members. Any time that you find all three members of the Godhead involved in something, it's a big deal. And they're involved more than you think. This is true for your salvation and your gift. Your spiritual gift. Listen to what he says. I mean, 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 5, and 6. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 5, and 6. You got your Bible open? 
What do you mean you don't have your Bible with you? You always come to class with a Bible, piece of paper, and a pencil. Now, you can go to our website later, and you can pull down the notes. And you can study them, but you should take notes. It should be mentioned that all three members of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are involved in the ministry, the ongoing ministry of spiritual gifts in the local church. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are a variety or different spiritual gifts, charisma, but the same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit distributing different gifts to different people and God appointing them in specific locations in the world for great ministry of the church. Spiritual gifts are for the common good of the body of Christ, the church. <clears throat> so there's the Holy Spirit. There are a variety of gifts. Same Holy Spirit. Verse 5. There are a variety, differences, of ministries, but the same Lord who is the head of the church and the savior of the body in charge of ministries of the church local. You pay attention what church you ought to be a part of. You ought to be a part of one who teaches the word of God so you can understand spiritual gifts, so you understand the significance of your importance in that body of Christ. Oh boy. Where have you been? How come you're not how come you're not going to this church? Are you going to another church? Mm hmm You say yeah. Tell me how your gift is helping that church for its common good. Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're an agnostic believer then. What do you mean you don't know? What gift do you have? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're an agnostic believer. See, God has willed you to be somewhere where you ought to be because of your gift. You don't even have a clue because you're an agnostic believer because you don't put your head in the word of God so that God can put the word in your head. My, my, my. You ain't paid attention to why you go to church where you go because you don't know anything about spiritual gifts because you're an agnostic believer. Now, we got to change that. Now, I'm here to help you. Now, I'm fussing a little bit, but I'm here to help you. How long you been a Christian you don't know this? You don't even know why you go, well, I go to the church I go to, but my grandfather went there and my mother and father. I don't know. That may be okay. Has God willed you to be there because if your gift is significantly important to the good of the church? You need to read this stuff. I don't know. There are a variety of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. This word effects means performances. God's in charge of the performance of ministries. The same God who works all things in all things. In every church all over the world. All three members of the Godhead are involved in spiritual gifts, and you're agnostic about it. We've got to change that. And over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to help you get rid of that agnostic view of life regarding spiritual gifts.
because we can change that. We can knock the word A off from that word, and you can become Gnostic. You can become a believer who understands and believes the issue of the importance of spiritual gifts in the church and that you have one and that you're going to learn which one you have if you stay with me. I will teach the, what the gifts are, and the Holy Spirit will, will manifest it. I just read that to you. It's not a big secret. I mean, is it a secret that you got an arm? Is it a secret that you have an ear? Is it a secret that you have a nose? How do you know? Because it's manifested. I put a little... When you do the faith cycle, you start out, I'm agnostic. I don't understand spiritual gifts, don't know anything about it, but I want to learn. If you do, you will study it with me, and you'll come to believe it, and you will no longer be agnostic. You will be Gnostic. You will have an understanding. But I want you to come to a place where you exercise your spiritual gift for the common good of the church, where it's manifested and actually works for the betterment of the church. And then you will, you will go from agnostic to Gnostic to epinosis. That you will have full knowledge of the subject of spiritual gifts and be confident how they work under the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the program of God's grace. Let us pray. Would you pray this prayer? I want you to pray it with me. You won't pray it out loud if you're alone, or you can pray it in silence. I don't care. Father, I've been an agnostic in regard to the subject of spiritual gifts. I had no idea how important they were in the plan of God under the new covenant church age. I don't, want to, I don't want to be an agnostic anymore. And I know that I have to study the word of God, believe the word of God, to no longer be agnostic about it. I can be one who is knowledgeable of it. I want to be knowledgeable of spiritual gifts. I believe, based on 1 Corinthians 12, that I have a spiritual gift. I got it at the point of salvation. I had no clue. I want you to reveal that to me during this course of study over the next few weeks. I want you to, I want you to disclose it to me so they can be manifested in the body of Christ. If I'm an arm, I want to be a good, strong arm for the body of Christ. Would you pray that prayer? Hmm? Father, we know that's the prayer of your heart. All three members of the Godhead are involved in this idea of spiritually gifted ministries in the church. Reveal to us, Father, the truth. Out of the word of God, let us, let us examine the word of God and, and let us become knowledgeable of how spiritual gifts, how they function, what my gift is, how it should function, and put me in the church where it can function and I can grow. In Jesus' name, amen.